from the University of Florida College of Journalism and Communications. You're watching WUFT News at 6. Day 7 of testimony in the Pedro Bravo trial. Good evening, I'm Amanda DiLeo. And I'm Morgan Falcon. Bravo is accused of killing UF student Christian Aguilar in September 2012 after Aguilar began dating Bravo's former girlfriend. WUFT's James Torres covered the trial at the Alachua County Courthouse this morning. James, tell us how the trial went today. Actually, today the prosecution began to start wrapping up uh, their testimonies. And today there were specific details presented that might have been a little difficult to hear. We are halfway through the second week of the Pedro Bravo murder trial, and today we saw a different perspective of testimony, and probably the most crucial. Forensics started the morning with testimony coming from Dr. Willie Harris, a professor at the University of Florida specializing in soil water science. He says there were similarities in the soil found on the shovel Bravo may have used and the soil Aguilar was buried in. Well, they had the same components, and they also had a high proportion and a less than very less than fine less than sand size fraction because I removed the sand. A high proportion uh, of the mineral gertite. And by my experience, it's not common in soils of this region to find a high proportion of gertite. That mineral is rare in Alachua County areas, but more common in Levy County, where Aguilar's body was found. The prosecution called Dr. Michael Warren a board-certified forensic anthropologist who recovered and examined the remains of Aguilar. Yes, um, both the, the wrists and the ankles had duct tape um, that uh, encircled the bones um, of, of, uh, of those elements. Uh, the duct tape around the wrist uh, was a continuous loop uh, and was found right next to the, the, the cranium, I think on the left side. Uh, the, the right arm was across, the left arm was here, uh, and it was right under the, the, uh, the head. But the most significant testimony came from Pedro Bravo's cellmate, nine-time convicted felon and former Crips gang member, Michael Angelo, who says he was asked to play a role. He just walked up, he, uh, he said, well, before, before he had slid anything in the door, he said he had, you know, he was messed up and then he had some ideas. He said he, he needed my help, so he came back a little later and slid a chip bag under my door that can, it had a note in it. That note? An offer to pay Angela to find gang members to copycat Aguilar's murder to make it look like someone else committed the crime. Angelo refused and said Bravo eventually told him his story. He, you know, I don't, I'm not sure like what they were talking about or anything, but you know, he got out like he had to find something in the back seat and he told me that, you know, when he was back there, uh, that he, you know, basically put a moving strap around the kid's neck and uh, braced himself against the seat. And, you know, the, he, he said that uh, he remembers watching the radio, the clock on the radio, and said it took like 13 minutes for the kid to, you know, I guess die. According to Angelo, Bravo had a full plan, first poisoning Aguilar, and if that didn't work, slitting his throat with a knife or strangling him. After using the moving strap, Angelo says Bravo was worried. He just said that, you know, after he had got back in the driver's seat and he was, you know, I guess riding around to dispose of the body that it was making a sound like uh, uh, and that, that's the reason that he held on to the driving strap while he was riding around because it freaked him out. James, as you said, today got pretty emotional. A lot, of, a lot of evidence was discussed. What can we expect for tomorrow? Actually, tomorrow, uh, Judge James Cola told us that we can expect the jury to make a deliberation as early as tomorrow afternoon. In fact, one of the biggest things we learned walking out of the courtroom was that the judge has given Pedro Bravo and his attorneys until tomorrow morning to decide whether or not he'd like to take the stand. And James, I know some misinformation about the case was made public today. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, there were, we got a lot of uh, information and some speculation about Pedro Bravo and the iPhone Siri thing. A lot of speculation has been going on about Pedro Bravo asking Siri on his iPhone how to hide his roommate Christian Aguilar's body. According to GPD spokesman Ben Tobias, that image was actually a photo Bravo saved to his Facebook cache on his phone, not a personally searched screenshot. He was also never roommates with Christian Aguilar, and they were only good friends in high school. If you'd like to keep up with information on the trial, watch our live stream on WUFT.org and follow our coverage on Twitter at WUFT Pedro Bravo.